Hello, students. I am Professor Cyrus Sotsis, and today I'm going to be talking about how to make a BuzzFeed account. And if you're watching this, you're probably in one of my classes where one of the assignments is to make what's called a listicle. Listicle, listicles, I'm sorry, are um, a, a type of media content that uh, where basically you're creating a list of items. Um, they don't necessarily fall under journalism per se, just because they're much more tied into the entertainment side of media content, but people love them. And you never know if your editor, if you're working as a media professional someday, or maybe you are now, but you never know if your editor might someday ask you to make a listicle. And one of the great platforms for listicles, and this platform really launched the whole premise of listicles in terms, listicles in terms of their popularity today, um, is BuzzFeed. And a really cool feature with BuzzFeed is that BuzzFeed actually lets you uh, create accounts on their website and make your own listicles as a contributor and um, if and sometimes they'll even feature your listicle on their main page. If you are a student of mine watching this and you're the listicle that you make as part of an assignment ends up being featured on the front page and this has happened to my students before, uh, please let me know because um, I will happily offer you a lot of extra credit and I'll try to uh, popularize it on my own social media account. So just please let me know if your list actually does get picked up by BuzzFeed on their main page. But regardless, everyone who uh, creates an account with BuzzFeed and everyone who makes a list with BuzzFeed can now consider themselves to be a BuzzFeed contributor yourself. That is one of the perks of the platform letting uh, people do that. So the question then becomes, okay, how do I actually make a listicle on BuzzFeed? And that's what this lecture today is for. So um, let me open up my browser. All right, which is right here. So this is BuzzFeed's homepage. And on their on their homepage, uh, here we go. Okay, so am I actually signed in right now? If I am, I need to sign out. All right, sorry about that. All right, let me I thought I logged out. All right, so just I want to start from scratch. Here we go. Okay, so this is BuzzFeed's homepage. First thing you got to do, obviously, is make an account. And to do that, you're going to click the sign in button. And if you don't have an account, then you're going to press the sign up button to make an account. I fortunately already have one. Uh, so my username is dog wild and I hit the sign in button. So um, one thing that's very important with BuzzFeed is it does take time. Oh, I see. I'm sharing the wrong platform. I see what's going on here. Hold on one second. I know why I did that. Okay, I'm gonna share this browser so I can move faster. Okay, um, so so one thing with BuzzFeed is they're very scrupulous when it comes to the content you do produce as a contributor. Meaning, um, if you have if if your BuzzFeed list is due uh, on a certain date, don't wait till the day before to make your list. And if you're in a rush to make a list, um, buy yourself time because uh, they want to. They do their their research and they do have security measures. And you can't just publish things and have them up immediately. It usually takes 24 hours for changes or for new accounts um, to actually publish content. So please get started on that sooner rather than later. Um, another really important aspect with creating a BuzzFeed list is all the media content you post in that list, you have to either own or have permission to use. Um, so why don't I press the sign in button first as you just saw a second ago. Um, and like I said, if you don't have an account, press the sign up button. Uh, but again, I do have an account, so I'm gonna press sign in. And and like I said, once you create your account, you could upload a profile photo. I'd strongly recommend doing that. The more personalized you make yourself, the more transparent you are, the more credible you are, and the more people will trust you in the grand scheme of things. Um, you could write a bio, this is something I need to update because this, this, this thing is old, but whatever. Um, okay, so let's say you, you've created your account and you're ready to make your list. You're gonna hover your mouth, mouse, mouth, mouse over this, uh, this bell symbol, and you're gonna click on new post. And then now you come to the actual editor page. Now, um, BuzzFeed's content management system, and the acronym for that is CMS, every website has a content management system. Um, most websites use uh, WordPress for their content management system. Some, some still use uh, Dreamweaver, which is a great software uh, program for that. 
Um, there's other uh, content management systems like Drupal, um, but really uh, WordPress has become predominant. Well, BuzzFeed still has their own and there, it's a little tricky. So that's why I'm making this video for you today. So hopefully this um, helps you in the process. Uh, when you're gonna make your list, and if you're doing this as an assignment, if you're one of my students, uh, let's say you have to, you wanna make a list with a minimum of 10 different items. Well, you're gonna have to come up first with something catchy. Uh, so, and you wanna title it. And so you're gonna put your title here. So let's say I wanna make a list just for this assignment of uh, greatest Warriors players ever. I love the Golden State Warriors, so why don't I make it? I'm gonna put the, the 10 greatest Warriors players ever. And then under description, you're just gonna kind of build on that a little bit. This is almost like a, like a subheader. This is like a summary statement. Um, so under here, I'm gonna put maybe um, the Golden State Warriors are one of the most storied franchises in NBA history. Here, are the organization's 10 greatest players ever. All right. Um, so now I have my summary statement. And at any point, uh, what I, what I, the cool thing is I think it auto saves in the process. Um, you also have the save button right here. So I, I highly recommend always pressing that just so you don't put a lot of effort in and, and, and waste that effort. Let's say your internet goes out. Let's say you lose power, just anything could happen. Just keep saving your work as you're going along. And as you're going along, you can also hit what's called this preview button right here. And this shows you how your list would look if you decided to publish it. So, um, oh, I see. So I haven't added a thumbnail, nail, thumbnail image yet. And this is telling me you can't publish this without at least one sub buzz. Okay. So, why don't we do why don't we do all that so for a thumbnail image you want to pick a, a photo that uh is represents your list that is representative that fits in with the theme and this is where the issue of copyright comes into play um so uh with buzzfeed um you must adhere to a uh, dmca laws dmca stands for digital millennium copyright act uh it's legislation passed in the late 90s by the u.s government um, to basically prevent people from stealing other people's work among many uh, issues that the law covers. But so what you can't do for this assignment and what you can't do for your BuzzFeed list is publish photos that other people own. All right. So the question, so when, when you're making a list like that, like this, you need to publish content that you have copyright to that is part of what's called the public domain. And this can, uh, you could do this in, in, in numerous ways. One of them is obviously getting the co content yourself. That means actually going out there, taking photos um, or taking videos. But let's say for the uh, sake of argument, okay, I'm, I'm doing a warrior's list. Not that easy to actually get photos of professional basketball players. So what do you do? Well, you can actually find free images online. And Google Images is a great place for that. So let's say I wanna use a picture of Stephen Curry, arguably the greatest player in Golden State Warriors history. I'm gonna search for Stephen Curry. Now, one important search tool to use, especially if you're searching for names where there's more than one word, but you want those words searched together in that order, is you can put quotation marks around the word. So if I put quotation marks around Stephen and around Curry, now my search is only gonna show websites and so forth that just have Stephen Curry together and has both words, okay? So if you scroll down, you know, you'll see a lot of Stephen Curry content, right? And this applies to pretty much anything you look for, but I want images. So I'm gonna click on images right here. And now Google is showing me all the images that they have found across the internet, but what it doesn't show me, at least from this initial search, are images that I have the right to actually use to publish as my own. But Google, in the last few years, has added to their advanced search a way where you can find those types of images. And it's super easy. It is really easy. All you have to do is click on Tools. And under this option that says Usage Rights, if you click on that, you will select what's called Creative Commons licenses. Anything that is deemed part of Creative Commons 
is considered fair use. Fair use meaning you are allowed to use this yourself in any new content you wish, you wish to uh, publish and produce. So I'm going to click on Creative Commons licenses and now uh, uh, Google Images is showing me just images that are part of the public domain. I could in theory use any of these photos. Let's say I want to use this first one right here. I'm like, all right, this is Stephen Curry. I'm going to visit the website because what you have to do is even though you're allowed to use the photo, you still might have to give proper credit to the original photographer. And one uh, uh, a nice piece of advice is if you ever find images on Wiki Wikipedia, every photo on Wikipedia is considered part of the public domain. Um, Wikipedia is at the forefront of making sure uh, that the images that are available online, um, again, are part of Creative Commons. And, and so if you find an image through Wikipedia, you can actually use it, but there might be stipulations. So for, and I'll show you how to find those. So let's say with, with this photo of Stephen Curry, I'm like, okay, I want to use this, right? Um, you can press this download all sizes button. And if you do that, it says right here how you would attribute it under, a set, under where it says attribution. Now you might be wondering, wait a second, I see Professor Cyrus Sots is the name right here. Yeah, that's actually my photo. I, I actually made this photo available um, to the public domain. A lot of people use it to this day, but I make it very clear that you can use this photo if you credit me. Um, and another way to find out what's going on with the photo in terms of its copyright, if you scroll down where it says under licensing, it says right here that you are free to share this photo, meaning you can copy it, you can distribute it, you can transmit the work. Um, you're also allowed to remix it, meaning you can edit the work, but you must give appropriate credit. You must provide a link to the license and you need to indicate if you made changes to it. Um, so, and this is a rule that a lot of online content makes people follow if you want to use their photo. So I'm going to go for it. I'm going to use it anyway. So I'm going to download this photo and I'm going to use a full resolution. And so I'm going to right click and hit save as, and I'm just going to save it on my desktop for now, because this is just for an exercise. Um, and then, so when it comes time to my Buzzfeed list, I'm going to use that as my thumbnail. So this says right here, click to upload. And I'm going to find that photo of Stephen Curry. And now it's uploading. I might not, maybe using the full image was wrong. Oh, it worked pretty fast. Okay. So let's see which one I want to use. I'm going to use the, the standard. I'm going to move this little grid right here, which indicates how it's going to look. And I want to just get him in the photo. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do it. And there's all, and Sewer says add alt text. So that is, this is great for people to help people who have visual impairments. So I'm just going to put right here, um, photo of Stephen Curry. And um, yeah, I don't think there's any place where you have to put a photo credit. So that's fine. I'm just going to hit save right now. And BuzzFeed might not require that simply because the thumbnail images are small and they're not high, high resolution. Um, but now it's time to make my list. Okay, I now have a thumbnail image. I'm going to show you how to actually uh, attribute it in your story. So you have, you have a few options in terms of your list itself. Under list editor, and you can minimize this just by hitting this gear button to open and close it. You could also hit this arrow to open and close it. Um, and uh, you, you want to make a decision. You either want to have your list not have numbers and all you're doing is listing it without any order, without numerical uh, figures attached to it. You can number it where it's going one through 10 or one through whatever it is, or you can do a countdown where you're going through 10 through one. You're, you're basically publishing this and it's going backwards. Um, so I'm just gonna make my number, right? So I'm gonna click that number button. And then over here, I'm going to begin making my list. So again, I've selected numbered and I'm gonna put for number one, Stephen Curry. So I'm just going to type Stephen Curry here. And notice number one now comes in. And under the add some text, I'm going to add some text to him. I'm going to describe him briefly and talk about how, you know, uh, considered one of the greatest point guards in NBA history. Um, Curry led the Warriors 
and all time three pointers and won three world championships with them. Okay, and obviously this is just as an example, right? I'm just trying to show you how you do this. Um, and, and, and again, you want to add multimedia elements with your list. Chances are, if you're, if you're reviewing this, I'm requiring you to make sure each one of your numbered items has some sort of multimedia element. Um, what that multimedia element is, is up to you. If you want to do, um, an image, I'm going to click on image. I think this photo thing here would work the same, but I'm going to click on, uh, image right here. Whoops. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. So I guess under number one. We're going to hit this image button right here. And I'm going to include that Stephen Curry photo again, because I want to show you how to properly attribute the photos. Uh, so you're not violating um, copyright. So alt text, I'm going to write the same thing as before. Remember, alt text is for the visually impaired. So I'm going to put photo of Stephen Curry. Um, now the credit, and that is where I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page, right? And if I click the download button, the credit is right here under attribution and attribution is defined as a credit. Um, I can also find it by opening the media viewer and pressing the download button here and where it says you need to attribute the author. And if I click on that, it also has the information here. The smart thing to do is copy the whole thing. And under my uh, under my post, I'm going to put under credit by Cyrus Sotsas, et cetera, et cetera. And then where it says via, where did you find it, the URL? I'm gonna put this link over here. All right, and I'm gonna press enter, enter. And, and so now my list, uh, if we hit preview, now it's gonna show me what my post looks like. And see, it has my photo and see under the caption by Cyrus Sotz's own work, so forth, so forth. Remember, I copied and pasted that from the Wikipedia entry via, via and then here's the link. And if someone clicks on that link, it'll take you to that Wikipedia page that has the original photo. Um, and again, different websites have different methods in terms of the, 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 the photo you're using. So, for example, if we go back to all those Stephen Curry pictures... Um, we want to find one that is not through Wikipedia, but let's say there's one through Flickr. Okay, so Flickr is another great resource. Very important to note, with Flickr, not all photos are part of the public domain. You have to check the bottom and check first. See where it says some rights reserved down here? I'm going to click on that. Um, and I just want to make sure. Screen sharing. I just really hope I'm sharing the right screen. I think I am. Okay. So, and under this, on this page, it says you are free to share this, meaning you can copy and re redistribute the material in any medium or format under the following terms. So I have to give credit. Um, this says you may not use the material for commercial purposes. Fortunately for this assignment, you are a college student. You're, you're not making money off this. You can. Um, so... We are good there. We have limits. But if you and you if you're working for a company and you were a media professional and you were making money um, on your website, you would not be able to use this photo. But for this assignment, you can. So who do we credit it to? Well, we credit it to Derek Story. So you would you would include in that photo that Derek Story took the photo, and you'd use this link to send your readers to where they found the original photo. Um, and again, every website that has a photo will give you, that's part of where the photo is part of the public domain. They will give you um, instructions on how to credit, what rights you have to use it. Um, all the Stephen Curry photos here are either Flickr, as far as I can tell, or Wikipedia. Um, but there are some other uh, websites as well, besides those two that also provide photos. And all of them will give you an example of, of how to credit it, what rights you have in terms of using it. So for your list, and again, you could preview it right here so I see what it looks like. You're gonna probably, depending on the class you're taking with me, you're gonna have to probably include at least one photo, at least one video, and videos, videos are the same way. So let's say I wanna do number, I wanna add to my list, all right? So number two, I'm gonna put 
let's say Rick Barry. He was actually a good friend of mine. Um, and I'm gonna put all text led the Warriors to the 1975 World Championship. And let's say for Rick, instead of a photo, I want to use a video. I want to use a YouTube video. So I'm gonna I'm gonna search for Rick Barry YouTube. And let's say I want to use this photo right here. All right. I'm gonna click on the link at the top. And I'm going to go back to my post. Let's close all these other tabs. And um, what I'm going to do is click this uh, this button here, where all I have to do is just paste that YouTube video code, hit enter, and now my video is in. And if I press the preview button again, now I have number one, Stephen Curry. I have a photo that I have the legal rights to. I have a number two now, Rick Barry. And I put a little text there and it's embedding a YouTube video. And I strongly encourage for any video you have in life, make sure you create a, a, a Gmail account, uh, which is also a YouTube account and upload your videos to YouTube. It's a great place to store and it's a great way to share your videos by simply embedding it slash pasting it onto other pages. Um, but let's say I want to use like a social media account. Let's say for number three on my list, I decide I want to add Clay Thompson. Okay, so I'm going to put Clay Thompson here. Um, and I'll put it under text, love his dog, Rocco. And I'll put his dog, Rocco is the best. And this time I want to actually put something from Clay Thompson's, let's say his Instagram account or his Twitter account. So I'll put Clay Thompson, Instagram, and I'll go to his page. And I want to find a picture of his dog, and I'm going to put that in there. Now let's see if I can do that. If this ever works. We're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, this thing's lagging, but we'll get there. Come on. And let's try, their, let's try Twitter, too. Let's see which one works. So there might be an Instagram issue, because Instagram is just in there loading. All right, we'll, use the, we'll use his... Uh, we use his, uh, oh, here's his Instagram. Okay, so let's see if I can find a picture of him and his dog. Uh, bam, right there. And one of the cool things, whether you want to include an Instagram post or a Twitter post or a Facebook post, all individual posts have their own links. And that includes this one right here. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select this. There's two icons here for the multimedia elements you're going to add to your text, right? You can either click this one to add your own photo or video that you own um, and that's on your computer, or you can click this button, which indicates a link. And I'm going to paste the code for his Instagram account. I'm going to hit enter and bam. Now for number three, Clay Thompson, I now can use his Instagram post as part of my story. And then if I hit preview again, Let's see how my post looks now. The 10 Greatest Warriors Ever, Stephen Curry number one. I have a copyright free photo. I embedded a YouTube video on my list and I included an Instagram post. And the same thing applies to, to uh, uh, Twitter as well. And also it should work for Facebook too. I don't know about TikTok or other applications, but so let's say you make your list. Let's say your list can be, again, you're gonna create a control over that. And let's say you're ready to publish it. Then you're just gonna hit this publish now button um and follow the instructions and if also if you're making this list uh, there should be instructions as well but just remember if you have a new account and even if your account is established be prepared to wait for up to 24 hours because buzzfeed's editors and maybe they have an algorithm that checks all these websites but they're not going to publish your story without confirming that all these links work and that you actually own the copyright um, embedding content is legal, so they, so that one probably that probably won't take as long. It still might, but um, you so be prepared. So don't wait until the very last minute to publish your BuzzFeed list, and then when you're all done, you're gonna hit this publish now button, and bam, you're officially a BuzzFeed contributor. Congratulations! So that is how you make a, a BuzzFeed post, um, and yeah, it's fun. People love of reading them. I made a few of them myself in my day. Uh, so hope you uh, have fun doing that and thank you very much. Take care. Later.